All right, welcome. This is M Dog from M Dog Gaming, and we are going to be checking out Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn. Still have, drawing uh, breath. I see you. He's still drawing. You. He's up. Uh, so what we're doing is we're just going to be sort of catching up to where we were, starting a fresh character. We had only played to level five, and um, just understanding more things about the game now. We're going to kind of start over and uh, catch up where we were. And make some different choices choices with our with our build. Trying to be more intentional about the kind of build we're going to go with. We're going to try with it really a, an arcanist is going to be our main class, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll see how it's worked with leveling, and um, and, and may end up going a little bit with like the soldier as a second class so to get the one. Uh, a little bit more. So you're the one uh, beefy, so that we can take a hit. But uh, excited about getting into Grim Dawn. Have been playing a lot of the. Uh, You're not looking too bad for someone just come back from the brink of death. The and bodies of the dead are rising. You will need to fight. And definitely looking forward to seeing what Grim Dawn has to offer. I believe Grim Dawn, the makers of Grim Dawn, are sort of guys that. Um, some of them at least used to work at Blizzard. I uh, used to play. I uh, used to work on. Of course, World of Warcraft, and maybe I've had some experience with Diablo as well. And um, I think this game was kickstarted, and uh, and then we, um, of course, finally got it in uh, early access on Steam. And then I think back in f when was it? It might have been actually as recent as December. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it wasn't that long ago when it went into like full release. Just want to make sure there aren't any any um, any options that are messed up. Looks like everything's fine. Um, so I have I was reading the, the sort of the quest kind of thing of the thing on our first playthrough, and um, but because we're doing this for both for our stream as well as loading this up on YouTube, we're going to kind of move a little quickly here early at least until we get caught back up, and at that point we'll probably sort of end the first YouTube video, as this is just meant to sort of be a, a primer to uh, never play it before and be curious about it, kind of see what the early part of the game is going to be. Um, as is fairly predictable in this type of game, what do you do? You start off, start off killing, uh, killing zombies, right? Uh, this is kind of the way it goes. These uh, action role-playing games, not in every one, but in a lot of them. Um, but thankfully, uh, I do believe the enemies will get a good bit more varied. So one thing that I think distinguishes this game from some other games that are maybe similar to it is uh, this game really rewards exploration. And so um, I think if you enjoy really kind of taking it slow in terms of looking under every nook and cranny in the map. I think that will help your ability to, uh, to enjoy this game. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go with a uh, weapon swap here from the beginning. We're going to start with a gun, just because it's got some ranged ability to it. We haven't chosen our specialization yet, so we don't have any, uh, any abilities. All we have right now is our main attack. Which, if we have our weapon out, our uh, melee weapon is going to get close, but so this will give us a little bit of range. We did hit level 2, so we have a chance now to uh, go and level up, which I believe if you click on the uh, skills window, or you can hit S, and so this is what we're going to choose. We're going to go with our kings. I do want to um, get to know this class a little bit, and it may be that we will try a different class down the road uh, at some point, but for right now, this is what we're going to do. So we have three points available. Um, and I think you have to put one point in just to get to the point where you can choose these, uh, these skills. And this is going to give us a plus to spirit and offensive ability. So it's a passive. We're definitely going to be wanting to put points in that. And then these two abilities are going to be um, important early on as well. 
we're going to just take one point in uh, Panetti's re replicating missile. And honestly, our build that we're looking at is going to be based around um, based around this ability primarily. But the points we put into it will, will primarily be these later uh, these later um, options. So we will get one point of this next time we have um, points available. For right now, we're not going to be doing anything with the devotion because I think you have to uh, kind of get down the road a little bit before you start working in the devotion window. Um, the other thing we do need to do is we can hit C to pull up our character. We, got, uh, we need to choose. We've got one available point. So Spirit's going to be our primary stat. However, we do want all the other ones as well. I think early here we will put additional point in spirit, but we don't want to completely ignore the other two, um, as they are also important, even though spirit will undoubtedly be our highest stat. Okay. Especially if we end up taking soldier as our second class, and that's one thing to mention about this game is that you do. can't really see me. I like how this game handles when you walk inside a building. Um, it does a good job of making things visible. In most cases, we kind of got caught in the doorway there, and it wasn't ideal. But um, so this this gun we're using is actually doing really good damage with these level one enemies. I'm not sure. Is this a flint rock rifle? Okay. So one thing to mention about this game, and I think I was about to say this before, is it does feature um, the ability to, to dual class. So you can go pure class kind of stay with your first class and kind of max out that potential. And so we're going to switch to our melee weapon. So see how that goes. Oh, and I didn't... And this will be a good opportunity to kind of show you how this works. But, you know, we did by putting skills in that... And Francis's gun actually is going to be an improvement, I think. By putting skills in that one ability, though, we have a new ability. Um, we can right-click on any of our ability slots and choose from these and we're going to take Panetti's replicating missile that's going to be an ability that we use quite a bit here especially early on I would say um, okay so let's check it check out the swap to our weapon and let's see so this is less damage per second but it's going to have an 8% chance of a fireball um, and it's a one-handed weapon so we potentially could have something in our offhand so I don't know that that actually is better. Plus nine percent fire damage. So if we were doing fire damage, that would be that would be good. But we're not at this point. So maybe we stick stay with the rifle. Okay. So again, like I said, a lot of this is um, early on. It's just about I mean, well, the whole game. I mean, it's just going to be about exploring, finding little pieces. Oh, and one thing, we picked up a, a lore thing. So Francis is no. And you do get experience for reading these, or at least opening them. Um, so that's something that you'll do. And if you want to get heavier into the lore, you can uh, read a lot of those and, and kind of get into a little bit of this world, this sort of post-apocalyptic um, uh, world. So... Um, that can, that can be pretty cool too. The nice thing is once you read a note, it goes in your compendium and you can go back and look at it anytime. So our overall quest is to go into the cave under Burial Hill, but we've got a lot of exploring to do, a lot of uh, things to figure out before we get there. Alright, so next enemy we see Scrap. We need the Scrap. That's how we build the bridge later on to get out of here. So here's our, here's our magic ability that we... Um, used one point to open, and you can see at level one here, it's not doing that much damage. We could level up that first ability, however, the build I'm going for, you actually don't level it up, so we're going to be kind of stuck with that, um, with that amount of damage. So let's look and see. Okay, so we just want to make sure we're exploring everywhere. Not missing out on anything. Exact same gun that we had earlier. 
we come inside. All right, so we're about to. Fairly certain we're going to have an upgrade to our melee ability with this uh, axe, and this definitely does do a lot more damage. It is also a uh, it's a one-handed weapon, so we keep our shield up. That's the only new thing we've got that we need to worry about. So I'm backtracking a little bit here because we didn't explore down in this area. First try on the axe. I like the attack speed on this axe. We're getting two attacks in before they even lined up to get their first attack in, so that's nice. So we're back to where we were a minute ago. Make sure we got out of, everything out of here. Nope, we missed this building somehow. Okay. Pick up the food rations. Another tonic of mending, those are always helpful. I think this is a lore book, yeah. So we will take that. And again, read that for a little bit of a lore experience. Good. Let's go back up and around. Actually, let's double check down here. Looks like there's more area. And I just don't want to leave areas unexplored. And if, if this isn't, you know, one thing when, when deciding if, if this game is one you, you should try, I think this is kind of a key element. I like it the zombies and those other creatures fight. You walk up on them and they'll just be like just way around each other. Um, if you don't sort of enjoy this sort of process of looking around and exploring, then that may be a consideration. Like, I don't think that the story of the game, at least from what I've seen so far, is in and of itself so interesting that if the gameplay and the exploration isn't fun, that it would be something you would necessarily want to do. But if you enjoy sort of loot, the hunt for loot, and um, exploring the maps and figuring out all the secrets and stuff. If you enjoy that, then the fact that there is some story going on, there's some choices you make in the story that are fairly impactful, at least sort of moment to moment, have have some, uh, I don't know if get around that way. I feel like they matter, you know, so... Uh, that's another element of the game that I think is cool. So in this video, we're already level 3. I think we'll aim for maybe level 5. Uh, get a couple more levels, and then we'll wrap this at least first video up. And then what we can do uh, as I continue to play is we can maybe update sort of how the build is going. This is where obviously uh, having some sort of AOE attack would be really nice. So there's a corruption. First time we've seen one of those. Little we'll eyeballs. And this early on, we're kind of picking up everything. Um, apparently, I don't know why it's saying we have skill points we haven't. Oh, three points available. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get this. I'm not even sure what that does, to be honest, but we're going to. Um, I've never used it before. We're going to go ahead and get that. And. I think we'll go ahead and put, get up to three in this. Because that's just going to give us more spirit and more offensive ability. So that seems that seems good. We've got one point available. I think we'll go to physique, help us live a little more. And then maybe next time we'll go cunning and then focus on spirit and spirit too. Okay. We'll go this way. Wipe everything out. Let's go. So our first little like mini boss fight here. Clear out the ads. Especially as an arcanist character, in a harder fight, you probably end up doing a lot of um, probably end up doing a lot of kiting to stay alive. So we have a superior mace. Doing a little less damage though than that. So this is a magic mace. So it kind of does less damage, but it's got the stats on it. It really helps the other things we have going on. That's in the shield. I don't know what else we need to change. We can 
see if this... Certainly looks good. I think we'll get to a point pretty quickly in this game where we'll stop picking up lights. Uh, it's depends on how completist you want to be in terms of selling lights for our game. Clearing stuff out here. There's a wretcher. I think that was the first wretcher we've seen. Picked up something there. Part of the house. Nothing in there, but we've got some lore books, it looks like. Okay, so let's see if this requires physique 20, 64, so we're not quite there yet. And let's click on our lore books here to get those experience. And we are up to level 4. Go this way first. Make sure we don't miss anything over here. If this does go up and around, we can explore corners of the map. Exploring the corners. Building, we'll continue to move forward. hit tab to open up the map because so many games like this have a little sort of smaller mini map or something that the tab changes but not in this one. And you can by the way zoom the map and um, actually rotate it which I think is a pretty cool feature. It's not one I end up using that much but uh, there probably are going to be some spots where that will be really helpful given the geometry of some locations. Back real quick. So desire. 
So the way that you can quick travel in this game, not only using the waypoints, but you can do it any time. You can use a rift. Yeah, a rift and go back to town and then jump right back to where you came from. stuff that we're not going to use. We may still put this jacket on if we don't get something better by then. Iron well spent. Okay. And we've got empty bags again. And you can click on your own portal, the one you just made, if you want to, in fact, use it. So there's a new musket. Let's see if that's any better. It's actually worse. It doesn't look better, I mean, it doesn't look worse, but it's slightly less DPS per second because of the reload speed, I suppose. So we are about to hit level 5, so let's see what we're going to do here at the end of this intro video. Um, I hope you're enjoying this introduction to the end um, No matter what class you choose, this is going to be what sort of the early experience is going to be like. There's level 5. Um, because it does take a little while, of course, to get into your build and to have different... Um, so this requires physique of 64, so if we put another point in the physique, but I think we're actually going to put it in cunning. We won't need many points in time, but I think it makes sense at least put one in there at this point. Oh, we have another one. Okay, we'll go for Seek. And then after this, we'll probably really start focusing in on, um, on our spirit on most, most level ups. And of course, the other thing we need to do is decide where our next point is going to go for, for the build. that now. So we've got one, we've got three here. I think what we do here is go ahead and put more points in down in this. Something hitting me. Sorry, I was kind of making me nervous, so. Um, all right. I'm trying to remember, like, okay, we have six points available. So this gives us access to these, but the build that I'm using actually doesn't do any of those. <clears throat> okay, now we have no points available. We actually need to get to here to start putting points in new things is we'll put one point here and overload and then four in here so it's going to take a little while for this build to come together and even the way i'm approaching this build is probably not the best way because it's leaving us fairly weak early on but it's on normal difficulty i think we'll be okay all right so let's uh where are we okay so you see the star here that's actually the entrance to burial hill so we'll finish this video by at least getting up to the entrance about either doing another video with the next part of the quest um, or maybe just waiting a little while and coming back to it once we have filled out the build a little bit. the weapon that was going to do the most damage, so um, 
you need to be using abilities. Oh, you know what? There is ability that I forgot to use, isn't there? Elemental exchange. And I actually don't. I've never used this before. Um. Arcane energy from foes and return it in the form of elemental damage. So you can see it's on. Maybe we should put this down here, because once it's triggered on, it doesn't look like... Okay, so it does go off after a time. Um... So we've got energy leech going on. And... We're converting some physical damage to elemental damage and we're increasing our energy regeneration by 8%. Okay, that's pretty cool. I didn't really. I didn't uh, remember that we needed to actually click that on. It should be doing a little more damage. So you can see we're taking damage ourselves, which in the face of these enemies will do that, which is where our secondary class going with the soldier will help. Um, well that should help. The gears will still be on. And with the little buff down here should go away when and if it goes off. And I don't know if that happens on a timer or how that happens. So there's still more of the map we need to explore, but we can go ahead and go in the cave first. So, all right, let's go ahead and wrap up this first video. Grim Dawn, I'm really enjoying it. I think if you're looking for a single player ARPG, it's kind of got a grim setting. Um, just looking to get a lot of loot, a little bit of story, but mostly focused on the loot, the hack and slash, and the exploration in the game. But you could certainly do a lot worse than Grim Dawn. It seems like if, if those things interest you, this is a good, a good one to try. All right. Well, I appreciate you watching. Please follow on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, come join us on Twitch at MDog Gaming. And um, you can interact while we're playing. And, and I always like doing that. So again, thanks for watching.